The Effect of Inflation Pressure on the Distance a Soccer Ball Travels by Kelsey Burnell at Jamestown High School. The FIFA laws of the game state that the inflation pressure in the ball must be between 18.5 and 15.6 PSI. After my research, I discovered that the collision between a soccer cleat and a soccer ball is an elastic collision. The collision transfers conserved linear momentum from a player's body to the ball. The inflation pressure in the ball changes directly with the elasticity of the collision. And I was wondering how much will this affect the transfer of momentum to the ball and the force put into the ball. If the inflation pressure showed a large change in the average distance traveled, then it will most likely have a large effect on a real world soccer game. I was wondering how the inflation pressure within the soccer ball has an effect on a soccer game and what would happen if the ball became too soft or too stiff. My hypothesis stated that the ball with the greatest air pressure will have the highest average distance traveled. My research supports this hypothesis because the more pressure inside the ball, the more stiff it becomes. The stiffness increases the elasticity and the elasticity and the coefficient of restitution have a direct relationship and therefore more momentum will go into the ball. The four different inflation pressures tested were 3, 6, 9, and 12 PSI for 10 trials each. To test this hypothesis, as you can see on the right, an H-frame apparatus was built with an attached swinging leg acting as a soccer player's leg and foot to hit the ball at a consistent force. To make the leg swing, there was a hole drilled through it so it could hang from the pipe across the top. A bungee cord was added behind the leg to add more force to the kick. Once the testing apparatus was set up, the ball pump and pressure gauge were used to check and adjust the inflation pressure inside the ball. The ball was then placed in front of the swinging leg. The bungee cord and leg were then pulled back. Before letting go of the leg, the inclometer was used to measure the tilt of the leg. Next, the leg was let go and hit the ball. Once the ball com came to a complete stop, the measurement of the distance the ball traveled was measured and this data was recorded. Nine more trials were conducted at this air pressure. Once all trials were complete, steps 2 through 11 were repeated for each air pressure. This project was very low risk. The apparatus required two people to operate, one person to pull back the leg and one person to measure the angle of the leg. Both people were standing behind the swinging leg to ensure no one was hit. There was also no one else on the testing site and this assures no one could have been hit by the ball show that the second highest inflation pressure of 9 psi had the highest average distance traveled by over 20 inches. This may be because the specific ball used was marked for between 8 and 10 psi and the 12 psi was too much for it. An observation during testing was that as testing went on the grass seemed to flatten out and the ball began to roll faster. Another observation was that the inclinometer measuring the angle of the leg as it was pulled back could have most likely been more precise and this could have slightly changed the amount of force put into the ball each trial. A positive observation was that the screw eye hooks were very helpful to hold the bungee cord and also use the handle on the leg during testing. This is a complete data table with all the measurements from each trial. These results show that there is a range for optimal inflation pressure and that higher isn't always better. This also aligns with FIFA laws of the game in that there is an optimal range of inflation pressure and suggests that inflation pressure in a soccer ball should be checked regularly and most importantly before games. My averages were much closer together than I thought they would be and the range only being 40 inches. Flaws in the testing that could have affected the numbers was the inconsistency in the grass and I believe that this is why there were multiple outliers in the data. Because 12 PSI was tested first, the grass was the most rough and this could have neg negatively affected the distance the ball could have traveled. Throughout testing, the ball would have even roll back a few inches after stopping. In conclusion, the inflation pressure in a soccer ball can be too low, as expected, but the inflation pressure can also be too high. When the inflation pressure is too low, the ball becomes soft and the distance noticeably decreases, but when the imp inflation pressure is too high, the ball becomes very stiff and the distance the ball is able to travel slightly decreases. My hypothesis is not fully supported by these results. If I were to repeat this experiment, I would build a stronger apparatus to be able to put more force behind the ball to make the collision more game-like. I would also find a better testing location with softer and flatter grass 
that is more consistent. To make a more educated hypothesis, I would read more about the different types of collisions and how elasticity in collisions can affect force. For my research, I used two physics books. I also found two studies online. I also went to FIFA's handbook to find what their laws were about inflation pressure in a soccer ball.